Hi, Dave. Actually came up last week just on the spot. Uh, how many people here are familiar with Zipcar? Everyone know the Zipcar model? Yep. Avid user, use it all the time. Totally revolutionized the whole entire car rental industry. Basically, no overhead, no locations, all online. Go find the car, go pick it up. What's their biggest cost? The cars, right? They have to have a car, a fleet of cars out there. What about a market where people can put their cars up for rental for other people to rent? So, I like it. So just totally thought about this on the way. I'm don't, not sure if people would be willing to do it, but basically you're creating a website. Let's say I want to go rent a car. I go onto the website, put in my information, put in my driver's license, credit card, just like in Zipcar, it's all in there, right? They have, they have me locked down. So I steal a car, they're going to track me down and, and arrest me. <laughs> now, if I'm a car renter, I go on the site, I put up my car on the site. I think this would be a great idea for people like our mid-20s in this busy cities like San Francisco looking for another revenue stream. They got a car parked in the garage they never use. They don't need it during the week, whatever. So you go on the site, you put up your car, put up your license, all your, or your license plate info, the car, everything. And then you put up the times that you want to make it available to people. So there you just totally cut the cost of like a zip car to have a fleet of cars out there. Um, and essentially you're creating a marketplace for people to go out there and rent cars and also for people to put up their cars for rental. So you got the revenue stream from a car owner's perspective and also from a renter's perspective. Ideally you would think if this kicks on and you get traction, you got a bigger fleet of cars to choose from, you got a wide range of cars, maybe you have a high end section where you know, maybe someone's got a Lamborghini parked in his garage and never drives it, whatever, and he puts up for a huge premium where then, you know, obviously you would hope that someone who's gonna rent it is a trustworthy individual, whatever. So I think the, the, the biggest challenge how I see it is um, making sure people obviously don't steal cars, so you gotta have the right incentives. The insurance side of things, I would see no idea how that works, kind of the galley around it, but I think just like Zipcar takes an insurance policy on the car, I would think you could find an insurer out there that would put a policy on this car for this period of time, and so. I've never used Zipcar, but if I was, if I had a Zipcar out and I like backed it into a pole or something. You're on the hook. So you as a user of Zipcar, you put in, you provide Zipcar with a credit card number, with your license information, they know who you are. So if you crash a car, total it, and it's your fault, it's, it's, on, it's on your shoulders. So you don't have to have any type of insurance to... No, so that's the beauty of the Zipcar model. So usually when you rent a car, if you're not 25 and older, you have to pay like an extraordinary fee for insurance. The insurance is baked into the cost of Zipcar. And same thing with gas too. That's the beauty of the Zipcar model is they have a prepaid gas card in all the cars. You don't have to worry about gas. It's included. So I think you could pretty much piggyback on the Zipcar model. I think it's a huge market opportunity. I think they just filed for IPO, I think. Zipcar has you know, figured things out in this space, and I think it's just taking it one step ahead and saying, cut their biggest cost, the cars. I, I, I think it's absolutely awesome as someone who, literally my car moves once a week right now, because I work out of the house, and I mean, like it's a seminary, like nothing happens with it. If this existed tomorrow, I would use it. It's like, like absolutely. feedback I was, I was trying. Yeah, to, I think it, it, if it, this it, existed tomorrow, that, I would use that's it. That's a lot like really? that uh, house I, sharing or whatever. Airbnb. Air, yeah, Airbnb. So this yeah. couch right here that you four are sitting on is actually on Airbnb, which markets itself as the eBay of space. Airbnb was Y Combinator backed. Um, yeah. Again, it's been this huge success. They actually have more available rooms in New York City than all the hotels combined. Yeah. And it's just been this ridiculous thing where people can monetize the space they have in their house. It's exactly. kind of like what you're saying is like people can monetize the space they have with their car. Yeah, and to that point, I was part of another incubator camp, and the guys came up with an idea called dorm dorms, where basically colleges can rent out their dorm rooms in the off season. Yeah, when people aren't there, when students aren't there, or whatever. So, same idea. Airbnb, totally the same thing. Uh, and I awesome. think I think this is just for the car market. Did you do some research? I think it might exist. But but I haven't like seen it. I just like heard it like last week. Similarity. Uh, how, how, how do you deal with the key issue? Bob. There's, Bob. there's, there's ways to do or it. App. Well, I think there's a, multiple ways. Like the way Zipcar does it, right? You have like a credit card. Right. You swipe the windshield with that credit card, and that's okay. an RFID or whatever. So the, maybe the service would provide you with a RFID recognition that you put on your windshield or whatever. You know, somebody goes to get your car, they just swipe the card. I, I think there's many ways to do it. Yeah, or you yeah. have a personalized code to unlock the steering wheel, or you know. Yeah, like yeah, there could be multiple. Yeah, I think so, so you can track the person driving. Your car. <laughs> the biggest issues I see is if people be willing to rent their cars out to strangers. No, Jose. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, I like my car. I mean, I like. Well, so what's like, the back I end look like? People who don't like their cars would do it, and so like. Why not? Like, if this existed, I would do it tomorrow. Yeah. That's this is my personal feedback. <laughs> I would do it tomorrow. And I think there's people like you. I mean, I think I would too. Yeah, yeah I think there's enough people. Couch, of course, too. Yeah, I do. I do uh, city car share, which is a little bit cheaper than Zipcar, which is mm-hmm. nice. And they have what's, more, see, what's their model? I'm not familiar it's with the same thing as same exactly. Zipcar. Yeah. They're a nonprofit, though. So I don't know. When I was in Berkeley, they were the only ones in Berkeley. Yeah. So, uh, but the one thing that always gets me is their cars are really small. Um, I mean, they don't have a lot of the. You yeah. know, if I need to move something, they have a couple trucks. But getting one of those is always, was, especially in Berkeley with all the college kids moving in and out. What pisses me off too about Zipcars is it says Zipcar on the car. Yeah, yeah. 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 So if you want to like impress, you, you branding wise, you're yeah. screwed. Yeah. It's screwed. Yeah. So if there's if there's a, a greater variety of cars, yeah. I mean not just. It's generic. Well, yeah, the generic. See, that's the thing. It's like under his model, you've got the yeah, whole yeah. you know cross section of every car that people buy. Yeah. Yeah, you got the high end, like, you know, ridiculous nice cars and... Actually, that's a, that's an interesting point, I hadn't even thought about this. Like, I wonder, I, I have no idea, if the leases, if people lease a car, if it says anything about, like, you no, must no, always no, be can't. the primary owner of this car, primary driver of it. So, yeah, I have no idea. You have know? authorized users, unless you have to own the car. Well, that's what I'm saying, like, does anybody, like, would these people qualify as authorized users? No, you would have to... Tell the leasing company, like BMW okay. or Saab or you know whatever. Yeah. But like no. But who knows? Maybe in terms of customer. But I mean, how are they going to find out? Uh, that's exactly. Yeah, right. It might be a minor point. Yeah. Like, I know. Use car dealership or something <laughs> like that. Somebody told you car. No, no, no. Exactly. Just rent them out. You exactly. Know? Like yeah. that'd be plug and play for them. Yeah, I guess really, the idea. That'd be a good way to bootstrap. Is just find some people that would. I, I'm excited about this. I want this to exist tomorrow so I can lease my car out because it sits in the garage six days a week. I think in like cities like San Francisco, young communities, especially like Marina, this area, I think you find a lot of people in Trevor. Who, yeah, I mean like... Very enthusiastic. <laughs> if someone lives here like, you know, 10 blocks away from the Safeway, they're not going to want to like walk down there and cab it back or try and wait for a friend to do it. Like they could be like, I want to run a car yeah. within two blocks from me. For 15 minutes or whatever. Yeah. And then the question is, how would you charge? Would you create just a marketplace where the owner puts his price that he's willing to rent it for? Is there a fixed rate based Probably. on car model? So, uh, again, I would look at Airbnb on how they do this. So they operate on like a, um, I, I'm pretty. It's like a fixed rate model, and they let the owner of the asset sort of, you know, like price it out. And that person has an incentive, obviously, to like correct as necessary. Yeah. And so, in some ways, I want to say it's like a race to the bottom, but not totally. Like, it tends to, I and mean, you're letting the market sort of Dictate. price yeah. it, right? Which is the best way to do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I, you know, if you have a Tahoe and I want to move some stuff, that's going to be more useful to me than a, uh, you know, like a ZSX that has no back seat. Right. I mean, like, that's how I'm going to sort of feel about it. Yeah, I think there's too many factors to kind of lock it into them. Bucket. Yeah, that's yeah, Ford Escort. Is this? Yeah, yeah. You, you let the person yeah. price it. Yeah. 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 What about uh, time of day? All that Yeah. Happen. What about if someone has your car and they go out and get a lot of speeding tickets and then they bring you the car back the next day and you don't find out about the speeding tickets for a couple of weeks because it's connected to your license plate? It's that's this, one question. That's so that's, that's a great question. Or yeah. the, the red lights. If you run a red light, they take your picture. It's the same thing with Zipcar though. You could go in a Zipcar and get 300 tickets. It's still you're going to be on the hook because the license plate tracks back to Zipcar. It's the same idea here. The license plate would track to the service, this website, so they would know right away. That they know the time of day that you had yeah, it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, but Zipcar is. They've got a lot of resources and illegal staff, so you know. Well, Zip they started is, somewhere as a startup, is, right? That are able oh. to go after well, also, well, I'm pretty sure all, that all the government will go chase that money. Yeah. 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 California's going after them. Are, are owned by a zip car, so the license plate, like when D of A looks it up, it says zip car. Whereas right. in this model, when someone looks it up, the license, when the DMV looks up the license plate, they're coming to you. Yeah, so, so it's you as an individual trying to get, you know, another individual who caused, who incurred all these fees versus zip car going after an individual. And another related yeah. question is what if someone takes your car and they bring it back filthy, you know, full of... Yeah. So, so I, really I think really happened. These are, these you know, are it's, good. Again, it's you versus an individual versus, like, yeah. zip car and the money and resources they have versus an individual. Right. Right. I think that was... So, yeah. so yeah. same, yeah. same yeah. question yeah. was actually asked about the guy, the CEO of Airbnb um, from Y Combinator, and his response was, he was like, you'd be shocked to hear this, but, like, the situation has not yet happened. As many times as we've done this, 
nobody's ever had the experience yet where it wasn't perfect. Yeah. And even if it did, we have your credit card information, we have your license, like we have everything we could possibly need to kind of go after you. So yeah, it's like, I, think, I think these are good questions that they ask. And I think, as you say, Zipcar is on the hook, right? Because they know Zipcar. It's the same thing. This entity, this company, would be ideally on the hook. I don't know how you structure this. Again, I have also no a, idea. There's also a reputation-based system going on. That's how yeah. Airbnb works. Right. The whole reputation yeah. thing. Have, have you ever used that? This. Basically, that person would be kicked off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And basically, you probably want to rent again, right? So, exactly. you know, you're, the way Airbnb, work, Airbnb works is like, the person renting the place reviews that person, and the person who got rented the place to rent exactly. it reviews the, the you know, the person who gave the guest and yeah. the guest and then so both people are trying to build a reputation. Exactly. And you get kicked uh, off. Yeah, so that peer pressure kind of melts yeah. We've been using yeah, Airbnb for like a year in Edinburgh, so in Scotland, which is And ideally I don't know if this is possible, but again if you get a ticket and that license plate is tracked by the police, they would know that that was done under this service for this period of time. And then that person, because they could track who rented the car at that right. time, would get the ticket. So and I imagine yeah. that it would be kind of the same cookie cutter problem if you did have that problem, and then you did have someone on staff that that was what they that was their job. They went after these issues, and they could crank a bunch out, and yeah. then, you know, yeah, as they came mm -hmm. through. But I agree. I think those are the some of the biggest <laughs> that issues. Is, I, mean, that's the, I like it. But yeah, I, like I would it. use it tomorrow if it does exist. <laughs> Wait, when would you use it, Trevor? Um, tonight. <laughs> you might I don't want my car, it's in the garage right now. I got five bucks. Yeah, right? <laughs> I've had three minutes. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. All right, that is actually the end of them. In